And people are getting sick and tired of Cobra being bullied. You only bully someone for so many times before people get sick of it and start coming to my defense. Which, in my defense, when you bully somebody with Asperger's, it tends to rub people the, the wrong way. Watching my wands dry is, quite frankly, more entertaining than interacting with my trolls. You gotta love a classic Cobra rant to start off your day. You know, he always likes to claim that the trolls are so trivial, they're so meaningless in his life, yet he literally cannot go a single day without ranting about the trolls. Either way, today Cobra, as, as expected, has another rant video for the trolls, but he also makes two spicy concoctions. Now if you've noticed anything on my channel, I don't cover Cobra consistently, I really am only invested when he makes disgusting meal hacks because it's just like, how? How? You know, I, I've seen bad cooking videos before, but Cobra always puts it to the top. Today's not the most outlandish. You know, surprisingly, we have no country crock in this video. It's a miracle. He avoided using the vegetable oil all over his tilapia, and I think for that, we're severely blessed. Either way, I'm not going to hold on for too long. We're going to discuss and examine some of these spicy foods. This Revenge of the Reaper beef jerky is made with Carolina Reapers. This stuff is no joke. I tried the first piece exclusively for Patreon. So there's a couple things that I'm just confused by right from the start. First off, I had no idea that Cobra had a Patreon. I probably should. You know, I don't keep up with him as much as I keep up with a lot of the other locales. I'm aware of things going on, but I guess I don't hear him beg as much. I was only really aware of his donations, but his Patreon, I guess, you know, I missed out. You know, I missed out on him trying the jerky the first time there, but I think we end up getting the better reaction <laughs> on his YouTube account. And, you know, I noticed on his Patreon that the lowest tier, you get a shout out and a muscle flex. So that's a really good deal. I really, you know, I'm starting to consider it for $6.66. You know, he's really, he's really trying to convince me. And then secondly, this is just a broad thing. I don't understand the fascination with like hyper spicy things. It really doesn't make any sense to me. You know, and like, I like spice. I can't talk on spice super well because I can handle spice well, I just don't know what everything's called. But like, habanero is a nice spice for me, and like it still keeps the flavor, it keeps it hot, and I don't know, I feel like once you start breaking past a lot of the more name brand spices and peppers that you get, it's just like, it, it's just heat. They're just increasing the heat index on, on the capsaicin of that pepper. So it's like the Carolina Reaper, you know, probably start out as a habanero and then they just modified it by increasing the Scoville units as much as they could. And it's like, all right, maybe as like a one-off anomaly, that's kind of cool, but I just don't get it. I don't understand people that are, like love this like crazy spicy stuff. It's just going to burn your asshole on the way out. <laughs> that has to be one of the funniest responses because so on his patreon i guess he just like ate half of one of the pieces of jerky and this one he literally took the remaining handful of jerky in there and just ate it all at once and then you know he's gonna wash it down with a bud light you know a bud light platinum i'm sorry you know so <laughs> it's no shock that something as harmful and disastrous as this would be and you know it's it's like one of those things where you're sitting there and you you slowly realize that oh your buddy's actually not doing very well you know this is the moment in the only use me blade arc that you're like oh damn blade's about to die we're witnessing something horrible here but don't worry cobes he's gonna make up for it he's gonna make up for it monster mean bean Coffee Java. 
fucking hell it's spicy. Should have swallowed it sooner. So here's another thing that I guess Cobra is just an expert at that I don't fully understand is why you would transition from eating something extremely spicy, extremely hot, and then have a monster Java energy drink. That, those two don't line up very well to me. You know, as some, I mean, I know his taste buds are shot. I know that he doesn't have the best culinary tactics, but you would think, you know, maybe just keep, keep a half gallon of heavy cream or something in whole milk in your fridge so that in case you eat something spicy, you can wash it down. And, and maybe I'm just biased, you know. I don't understand why you would get coffee-flavored anything that's not just coffee. Like, why did he get that instead of, like, a Starbucks cold drink that you could keep in the fridge? Like, it, I don't know. It doesn't make sense to me because, you know, this is clearly much more unhealthy <laughs> than the Starbucks variant. I know Starbucks isn't healthy at all, but, you know, we're mixing in special chemicals maybe that's what gives him his like secret powers and maybe that's what i'm really missing you know is maybe he's on to something maybe in cobra's universe monster java coffee imitation drink is the cure for spicy foods and maybe i'm just judging too much that's that's the likely case <laughs> You just have to love Booger Boy over here. He's got boogers all in his mustache. Walks over, gets his shop vac, and he says, You know what? Instead of getting, like, paper towels to throw away this, like, spit-up I just had, I'm just gonna suck it down into the vacuum, and it's gonna sit there for months. I'm not gonna dump it out. It's just gonna be there indefinitely. You know? It <laughs> And that's why, you know, I, with the whole documentary thing that happened like a month ago where that guy went out to meet Cobra, I find it shocking that his, like, apartment doesn't smell. Because, like, even when he's trying to do things in, like, good spirit, like, he's doing a good job of trying to clean right away, he's cleaning incorrectly. Vacuuming up spit up is gonna make things smell bad. And maybe it, you know, maybe it won't smell directly from the canister, but whenever he turns on that thing again, it's going to be horrible. But, hey, it's his dwelling, it's his wizard tower, you know, I shouldn't judge. This jerky is really spicy. Ooh. God, I love the commentary. Cobra's just speaking everything that's coming to mind, you know, he's gotta get his little tissues to clean out his little nostrils, it was too spicy for him, you know, he, he's like Icarus, he flew too close to the sun, you know, he had one bite before on Patreon, said, well that's chump change, you know, I'm gonna ramp this up, I'm gonna eat a handful, and then down an entire monster, and then vacuum up all my throw up, and that's when you know you've gone too far. They are boneless. I hit both sides with Alex Vickner's glass Cajun seasoning. He blows amazing glass, check him out. A couple of squirts of lemon juice. And of course, some of that. Frank's Red Hot Sauce Cayenne Pepper Sauce. So right from the get-go, this is not necessarily an abomination. Not quite. Not quite yet. Because he's doing a couple things I think, hey, that's not a bad idea. He is in love with this Alex dude seasonings. I don't know where he gets them from if this dude from Instagram just sends them to him. Because he uses it on literally everything. He thinks it's so delicious. But, at the same time, he then follows it up with lemon, which makes sense, you know, lemon can bring out the nice flavors of a fish. And then, the part that is a little bit dicey is he's throwing Frank's Red Hot Sauce on top of the fish. And to me, I'm like, uh, 
You know, I actually kind of enjoy hot sauce on fish. I don't think that's a typically common thing for people, but I like to save it until afterwards. I'm not trying to coat this like a chicken wing. You know, I'm trying to just enhance the flavors of the fish afterwards. But all in all, it's not a it's not a crime. You know, if if we're we're not even at like a misdemeanor level necessarily yet. You know, we're we're a loitering on school grounds at like a 6 p.m. type of guy. You know, we're gonna be asked to leave probably, but it's not too bad so far. The fish fillets are frozen and boneless. I'm preheating the oven to 350. You want to bake these fish fillets in the oven. And that's what I'm having for dinner. They don't got to be super fancy to be a food hack or a cooking video now. So now we're reaching an actual issue with this dish, right? First off, it's filet. It's not fillet. I'm aware in different parts of the country, people call it fillet. I, you know, I'm not going to be a, a grammar stooge that tries to to bash everybody that doesn't pronounce things the same way. But, one thing that wasn't mentioned, he doesn't evenly coat his seasoning on his fish, which is weird. And it's going to leave pockets of just, like, unseasoned dry fish that he's going to chow down on. None of this really matters, because every time that he ever eats anything anywhere... It is just a disgusting ensemble because you can't taste anything. The next problem is he decided to season his fish before he fully let the, it like def defrost and thaw out. So it's going to be super watery and we're going to see he's, he's going he's gonna to shoot for the stars. You know, it's super watery, but hey, maybe this is a new tactic I should try. Typically, I keep my fish, you know, you put it in a slightly, slightly warm water, let it sit there for 20, 25 minutes to completely thaw out, then you're good to go. Not Cobes, he's putting it on the metal tray and he's dousing it in Frank's Red Hot. Now that our fish tilapia has been dethawed, yeah, it's dethawed and our oven is preheated. YouTube, here's the tilapia. I finished cooking it last night, so now let it cool off. Why does he always do this, man? Is he, like, cooking his food hacks at, like, 2 in the morning every single time? Because he always lets the food just sit overnight. He cooks it, takes it out, plops it down, and goes to bed. And it's like, who does that? You're just gonna leave freshly cooked food on the counter, on the table? Just... It's going to dry itself out sitting there. It's, it's, I mean, you can see he cooked it to a hockey puck. These things are like absolutely mangled and you know, he's going to enjoy it. He's going to love it because in his mind, he just perfected this new dish. And in my mind, I think he was so close. He was so close to getting something actually right. And then he just pissed it all away. It's really sad to think about. That's doable. It's got a little bit of heat on it, but it's doable. Spicy fish version 2.0. You know, you have to love the fact that any time that Cobra eats anything, he just sort of sounds like, you know, I used to have Labrador Retrievers growing up. Those were the dogs that we had. And that's sort of the sound that they make when they would eat because they, they loved food. They were food obsessed and it was just like chugging it down the throat. And now it's similar because Cobra's teeth don't work very well. So he's trying to chop up this food in his mouth and swallow it and it just there's heavy breathing there's 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 liquid moving around in the mouth it's not a great sign and then he follows it up with saying that's doable mmm <laughs> does that sound delicious that's doable you know it's edible I'll eat it because it's actually food and it's like Cobes shoot higher than that you can do better and the crazy part is I don't think he has ever once looked at a recipe online and I think that's actually genuine. I think he picks up any of his tips based off of like things he's seen 
or he's just like, well, I heard fish and lemon is supposed to go together. Let's do that. And then he just free balls it for everything else. And for that, I appreciate him. What are my trolls doing with their lives? Their obsession with me is sad, pathetic, and unhealthy, and they are the biggest losers on the planet. Now, look at the cops who showed up. We're very nice, and uh, we handled it as professionally as possible, and nothing happened. They just asked a couple questions, and I got some answers that I will, I will keep private for obvious reasons. Now, I refuse to let the trills get to me, and I'm never going to stop being awesome. And quite frankly, I've got better things to do than to go out of my fucking way to harass my trolls. So I've already mentioned, the trolls are obsessed with him, he's obsessed with the trolls. But apparently, somebody called a, like, a wellness check on him recently. And like, my whole point of view about all this stuff is like, don't involve random other people in the shenanigans that go on. So like... If, if I'm painting a picture, I'll, I'll use Music Biz Marty for two examples. I remember there was a stream was, uh, several months ago where he was just sitting late at night, kind of bored, trying to think of what he wanted to do with Cyrax. So he was just thinking, well, I'm going to call a bunch of local businesses like plumbers or electricians and have them show up to fix something. Like, I don't think that stuff's cool because you're just dragging random innocent people into this nonsense for no reason. But, when he moves moves into an Airbnb for a couple days across the street from Cyrax, I think that's cool. The troll is the one directly engaging with him, and anything that comes from that is a mano y mano. It's one-on-one. -on -one. And, like, you can group people, like, you can group Cyrax's house if you want to. And that's my view of things. Like, Cyrax is a different case than King Cobra, because I actually like Cobra. He's, like... He's esoteric in a sense, but, like, he's a mostly monotonous guy. He doesn't do anything that's too bad. Like, Cyrex is a little bit different because he's actually, like, horrible. He's, like, a monster. So, like, uh, you know, I can see the gray lines a little bit with that case. But in terms of calling a wellness check on Cobra, it's like you're wasting so much resources for no reason. The dude's fine. And, like, there was a video recently of like him saying that uh you know his his bearded dragon likes to get high with him and people were saying that they were gonna call uh animal control or whatever to show up and they've done it before and from what i looked up it's like as long as you're not giving him like crazy amounts it's mostly harmless it's not like poisonous to him doesn't mean he should be doing it but like all this stuff is just, like, the trolls are super eager to try and, like, make him look like a clown. And it's, like, I don't think that's wholly necessary. No, I take pride in my magic wands, and they're getting better. I'm coming up with new designs for Etsy and all that kind of thing. Much better use of my time creating my own music, working on magic wands. It's not that difficult. He says it's not that difficult, but he literally never keeps his Etsy shop stocked, which is the crazy part. Can you imagine? I mean, he's he's clearly living off of, like, government funding. That's how he can live anywhere. That's one part. But imagine being able to, like, supply all of your, like, other necessities. Like, he probably could make enough money off of selling wands to at least afford his groceries every month. I mean, I don't know if he really goes grocery shopping. You know, I know he loves to DoorDash all the time, so maybe it would cover, like, half that, because, like, DoorDashing is expensive, but, like, either way, he can make these crappy wands that all the trolls who are buying them clearly understand that these wands aren't real. <laughs> you know, they're not, they're not full of magical powers that'll save them, but at the same time, he sells them for, like, 50, 60 bucks or whatever, and it's like, he never has them fully stocked. You know, get a business manager on board, Cobra. Let him say, yeah, we're going to make a hundred of them each month. We're going to get $6,000 in wand sales a month. Figure it out, dude. You kind of get a free pass politically if you're mentally or physically special needs. So you hear someone else say it and they're 
not disabled physically or mentally, you're like, hey man, could you not say that word? Why? Because that's offensive and that's also our word. You feel me, YouTube? Because black people can say the N word and nobody gets offended, but when a white person does it, he's a racist piece of shit. You say it with an A at the end, like you're saying homies and shit, you know what I'm saying? So here's my opinion about this whole thing. I didn't want to get too whatever, political or whatever at the end of things, but my stance on all this stuff has always been what the original iDub stance was, which is either all of them are okay or none of them are okay, and you can't like partition these words, you like can't tribalize these words, you know, you can't say oh, well, the cripples get this one, and the blacks get this one, and the Asians get this one. It's like, no, that's not how language works. That's not how any of this works. And it's like, it, it becomes hypocritical because once it's like, well, if they hate this word so much, but they're allowed to use it, and then if somebody not within their group uses it, they're allowed to, like, lash out at them and try and cancel them and beat them and do whatever. It's like, that whole thing's stupid. I really think that words should have, like, no impact on people for the most part. I know it's kind of grand coming from a guy who criticizes a bunch of locals online, but like, I'm not over here trying to ban people calling me stupid or whatever down below. It's like, everybody should be allowed to just say what they want. <laughs> and you should be allowed to choose whether or not you think that's cool or not. But everybody should just be able to say what they want. And that's why I'm going to end this video right there. Hope you guys enjoyed it. Till next time, talk to you guys later. Uh, peace.